Hi, I'm Will Jenkinson from the group of Graham Anderson and Eric Jenkinson at the MRC Centre for Immune Regulation at the University of Birmingham. Today I'll be showing you a technique for setting up fetal thymic organ cultures. In addition, I'll also be showing you how to treat these organ cultures with 2-deoxyguanosine, and this is a substance that's selectively toxic for lymphoid cells in the organ culture. There are several applications of this technique in the lab. One such application is the production of reaggregate organ cultures. Other applications include the study of the different stages of thymocyte development. And using fetal thymic organ cultures, we're able to add in reagents that either inhibit or stimulate different pathways, meaning that we can study the role of specific molecules in this process. So let's begin. First step to preparing thymus organ cultures is to harvest day 14 or 15 mouse embryos from one to two pregnant dams. First, spray off the euthanized mouse with 70% ethanol, then use forceps to pull upon the fur and make a V-shaped incision in the abdominal region with scissors, starting from the bladder and continuing up the two lateral horns of the uterus. Remove the uterine horn and place it into a sterile 10 cm Petri dish. Cut along the length of the uterine wall and remove the embryos still in their amniotic sacs. Wash them in a Petri dish containing 10 ml PBS. Using two pairs of fine forceps, carefully tear open the amniotic sac and free the embryo from the sac and placenta. Next, transfer the embryos to a fresh Petri dish containing 10 ml of a 50-50 mixture of PBS with RPMI 1640 media with 10% FCS. Under a dissecting microscope with the embryo submerged in medium, decapitate the embryo using forceps. Open the anterior surface of the chest wall by placing the tips of a closed pair of forceps into the chest cavity and open the forceps to reveal the internal thoracic cavity. Remove the entire thoracic tree, heart, lungs, trachea and thymi by grasping gently below the heart and place into a 35mm dish containing 5 ml of RPMI 1640 plus 10% FCS. In a day 14 to 15 embryo, the rudimentary thymus lobes are located just above the heart on either side of the trachea. Remove individual thymus lobes using fine forceps and also remove excess connective tissue and any adherent blood before expanding into organ culture. Now we are ready for organ culture. To make a lymphoid F-tox, take a thawed 9 millimolar stock of 2-deoxyguanosine and pipette 600 microliters into a 90 millimeter bacterial plastic Petri dish. Add 4 mils of pre-warmed DMEM media and swirl the dish so that the entire surface is covered with the media. Obviously, if you want lymphoid cultures to study T-cell development, leave the 2-deoxyguanosine out. Using forceps, place two sterile artiwrap sponges pre-cut to one centimetre squared into the dish. Allow the media to soak into the sponge for approximately 30 seconds. Then turn the sponge over to wet both sides. This ensures that the media in the dish has access to the tissue. Again, using forceps, place a pre-sterilised 0.8 micron filter onto the surface of each sponge. Filters are placed shiny side up onto the sponge supports. To transfer the thymus lobes to the organ culture filter, we like to use a mouth control glass pipette. To make glass pipettes, heat the glass tubing over a Bunsen burner flame, and when the glass is pliable, remove the glass from the flame and pull on both ends to stretch the glass to no more than 10 centimeters. Allowing the glass to cool, then pull on each end to snap the glass. This produces two tapered glass pipettes. The thinned area of each is about 5 cm long with a tip of about 0.5 mm in diameter. 
to set up the pipette apparatus, place a plastic pipette tip in the other end as a mouthpiece and place the blunt end of a glass pipette into the tubing. Carefully pick up individual thymus lobes with the mouth pipette and place them on the surface of the 0.8 micron filter in organ culture. We recommend putting five to six thymus lobes on each filter for a total of 10 to 12 thymus lobes per dish. This allows plenty of space for the organ cultures to grow and allows the 2-deoxyguanosine to eliminate all of the endogenous lymphoid cells. Once the cultures are set up, assemble a sandwich box lid with a lid of a 10 cm Petri dish as a platform and double distilled water just below the level of the platform. Place up to three dishes into the box and seal the lid to the box with tape. The lid should have two 5mm air holes drilled into opposite corners. Place the boxes into a 37 degrees Celsius incubator with 10% CO2 for five to seven days, after which time we disaggregate and then re-aggregate these cultures to study stromal thymocyte interactions in a controlled three-dimensional environment. After a period of culture, typically being five to seven days, FTOX are harvested by submerging filters in media and pushing the lobes off gently with forceps. You can see that A-lymphoid FTOX are typically smaller and cystic compared to non-deoxyguanosine treated lymphoid lobes. So I've just shown you the technique for setting up fetal thymic organ cultures. In this protocol, we've shown you how to treat the fetal thymic organ cultures with 2-deoxyguanosine, and this depletes all lymphoid cells. Typically, after five to seven days of culturing the thymi, we use these organ cultures to produce reaggregate organ cultures. However, this is not the only technique. We also use non-deoxyguanosine treated fetal thymic organ cultures to transfer into the kidney capsule of athymic mice. In addition, we use lymphoid fetal thymic organ cultures to study T cell development in controlled conditions in vitro which are free of any secondary effects that may occur in vivo. So that's it, thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.